First of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I feel privileged because I'm not a researcher, actually. I'm, I'm a managing team of researchers and we are using uh, research and actually using some of the research that was presented today in the uh, counter engagement uh, of the World Bank. So the presentation is pretty long. I'll skip some of the slides because taxable capacity, tax effort, importance of it has been discussed already. Uh, of course, you know, this is another graph showing that, uh, you know, what is the actual collection of tax revenues by region and by income groups and nothing, nothing new from, uh, from the uh, also keynote speech of today that we see the low income countries are collecting less than high income and you can look at the structure from where it comes, uh, it cra and comes across the board and then we in the bank have these uh, uh, regions that are, the, the acronyms stand, stands for these regions. So. We also look at the regional side when we engage with the countries. And um, of course, you know, you see that uh, total tax revenues and mix uh, uh, differ. And when we engage with countries, we uh, very often use the tax effort, uh, not only tax collections, and, and we can discuss, you know, some of, some of the, uh, the, the methods how to collect tax potential, tax effort has been already presented. But I think for us, it's important to actually use some of these tax uh, effort numbers to engage with countries that seem to be above uh, potential in terms of collection, seem to be below potential. And, and believe me, there are some countries that show uh, results that are close to the potential. Then we, of course, engage less on the, on the level of taxation, but more on the quality of the tax system, uh, looking at the um, progressivity, fairness, etc. But uh, some of this uh, research that you can't hardly read, uh, uh, basically you can't read uh, from the slide, is just to show that uh, what colleagues presented before, there is a lot of work on uh, how to measure tax potential, and, uh, and there are only a few that, that, that are presented in the slide. But what I want to put more emphasis uh, that uh, actually it's very important what are the um, uh, explanatory variables in terms of tax potential, because uh, there are many economic variables that have been used in the literature, and I think that that list is not fully completed. And to me, what has not been discussed today is also probably area for the further research that, you know, many of these variables will m very much matter for low-income countries, and I'll, I'll want to uh, focus on, on that a little bit more later. Um, uh, we, uh, we, we mentioned economic structure, we mentioned demographic variables, but what is really important is this other that are less tangible, which is governance institution variables. And they are captured by some simplistic indicators in the literature, like you know, law, law and order, demographic accountability, corruption, governance index. What do they capture? It's, it's, it's a big discussion, uh, and they are very static, I would say. If you look at some of these institutional variables, they haven't changed much in the, in the last uh, few years. Uh, so um, what I want to really, uh, and I, I, I expect we have a lot of researchers in the, rooms, uh, in the room and also uh, uh, policy, policy makers, is to think about two, two important variables that I haven't seen much in the recent re uh, research. It's one how digital economy and digitalization in, in influencing tax capacity and tax effort, how to capture that part. Because, um, of course, there are challenges that exist in terms of valuation, but we see many countries are using uh, very smartly digi di digital uh, digitalization and digital, um, uh, I would say, revolution to collect more. Uh, so that's one, one, one issue that I think uh, uh, require more research. Uh, and second one um, is, I think, uh, basically economy and informality. And, uh, um, you know, the, the problem is first to measure, second, how to include it and how to interlink it with the tax structure. And I moved to Washington a few months ago from India and I've used some of the research that we've done in the bank uh, on the tax potential that completely didn't reflect tax potential of India because part of the economy is informal. And, uh, and, and the question was, and, and some of this informal economy, of course, pay taxes uh, through consumption taxes. So that's another big, uh, I think, uh, 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 challenge for researchers to how to capture it. Uh, and of course, I mentioned institutional variables. Um, there is this uh, evidence of uh, uh, two-way causality in that countries that uh, have underdeveloped institutions 
have, of course, uh, this has impact on their capacity, but if you have low capacity, it's further, uh, you know, undermined uh, institutions. So, um, and, and there is uh, in the slides some discussion of tax expenditures, and it's linked also to the, to the, to the capacity. So, I believe that the way how we capture institutions and capacity countries uh, will have a, a big uh, uh, effort on the actual collection vis a -vis potential. Um, interestingly, despite the, you know, all these methods and different uh, differences in literature, you know, in terms of what kind of independent variables we use, uh, do we use SFA, SFA or the DA or the OLS, some countries permanently show us being the ones that are, you know, having a low tax effort and they are in the red. I don't think we will focus on this today, but but there are there are countries that actually haven't done much progress, and despite of the you know differences in method and and, and improvements in those, um, uh, uh, they they still uh, there is a still uh, I would say um, scope for the, for increase of of the tax revenues compared to the potential. This has been discussed. There are different methodological issues with all these uh, uh, methods used today, so I'll just uh, skip it. Um, they have pluses and minuses, and I think colleagues already pointed to some of this. What I want to finish with is whether there is an alternative way to do it, and we have started to work a little bit on that approach, and um, some of people that contributed to the slide are in this room, so I hope uh, you can challenge them during the lunchtime or dinner, but is there an alternative way that the way that focus on the you know economic potential economic structure can we try to look at the individual when we start to think about uh, measuring um, tax effort and basically it is around question what should be the threshold uh, for to put to tax uh, where we should stop and uh, and maybe this can reshape a little bit the discussion around the tax capacity. Um, and of course, what has been mentioned before, uh, uh, the country, whether it's resource rich or not, to us uh, makes a lot of sense to distinguish. Um, so let me uh, do uh, show you a little bit of the sketch approach of this. What would it mean if we taxed capacity uh, more from the individual level, and this hasn't been transferred yet to the research paper, but uh, uh, if, if you think it makes sense, uh, we can, we can uh, progress with that. So then uh, potential tax base here would be basically viewed as a one that is, um, uh, one that is uh, uh, based on the taxpayer um, and, uh, of course, legal structure of the economy of the taxpayers. And... Uh, and then, you know, all the voters will become a kind of um, uh, core tax base, what we call here residential tax base. And then the first step will be to establish the government share of, you know, um, this 10,000, 100,000 uh, case ceiling where to tax. And, um, and, this, and this becomes a potential tax, tax liability. Uh, and, and of course, then you you can also uh, think about uh, how to treat uh, revenues from the foreign direct investment, natural resources. That would be another layer of the complexity. But let me move on because I already got signal that I have five minutes. So uh, once you have this potential tax uh, like a, um, a residential base, uh, you, you will think about how to actually start to tax the individual. And it's, it's pretty simplistic because then you would apply tax instrument to the individual uh, across the income um, uh, distribution. And you'll start, of course, with the VAT that would be the, the one that the tax that would pay, uh, everyone would pay. And then, then you'll create these layers that would basically allow you to construct like a, a, like a, like a, like a, a, a tax collection, uh, tax by tax. And uh, finally, of course, uh, you will look at the mapping of the, what you want to achieve as a potential in terms of the uh, t taxing the individual vis-a-vis -vis how much you can tax uh, your individual based on their income distribution um, in, in the society. So this is very simplistic and very general at this point, but uh, I want you to, to be triggered uh, by that approach, whether we could think about something like that instead of using these, you know, cross-country studies and economic uh, structural potential. Um, 
Uh, Gauta is with me. He's one of the people that uh, uh, have put a lot of thought into this individual approach. So, if you want to, uh, if you want to discuss it, uh, and uh, you have ideas, critical views, uh, welcome. So uh, that's more to trigger the discussion uh, rather than present a, a recent cutting-edge research. But um, thank you again for for giving the opportunity to to talk to you today. <laughs>